Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to open up with a short prayer. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you for this morning, Lord. I really just want to pray, Lord, that you bless this meeting, Lord, and bless every word that I want to say, Father, because it's something that I that you've laid on my heart, Lord. And, Lord, I pray that I can now step out of the way, Lord, and that you can speak through me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So what I want to speak about is... Um, just almost like a phrase that I felt God was just dropping in my spirit over the lockdown time. Um, and it is, it's, it's a stay in the peace. So um, basically, obviously there was lockdown time and there was homeschooling and there was a lot of things going on. And we decided as a family to go on a camp. And when we were at the camp, that's when I really felt God was just like dropping it in my spirit almost, stay in the peace. And for me, it was quite interesting because I felt like, well, I am in a peaceful place. It was um, obviously beautiful surroundings, trees, it was like a lake. You could, it was just, you know, it was like I was almost removed from the chaos and then um, in a place, what the world will call a peaceful place. And I think God just really wanted to bring it to my attention that the, the, the big difference <laughs> between you know, peace externally, and then obviously the inner peace, the perfect peace that God brings. So um, basically, I went to the dictionary, and the dictionary just says peace speaks mainly about a freedom of any strife or dissension, and it's bringing a temporary reprieve from war, tranquility, and it's quiet or stillness. So as we know, we're not always in a place like that. But God's word offers us a different definition of peace. The Hebrew, Hebrew word shalom. Shalom is a state of wholeness and completeness. And it's a well-being of your mind, soul, and body. Shalom actually brings peace. And shalom is peacemaking. So one scripture that I really just thought about is um, the one in John 15 verse 5. Um, where, where it says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So that's quite important that we need to remain in Christ and he, he remains in us. And that's what his word says. So therefore, we have that peace. Um, another scripture in John 14 says, I, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. Not the kind of fragile peace the world gives, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. So peace is a gift. There's nothing we can do to deserve it, but, God's, but by God's grace, he gives us peace. And Jesus just doesn't, he doesn't just give us the gift of peace. He also personifies it because Jesus is the prince of peace, as we read in Isaiah. So the peace we've received is unchanging and a courageous peace. Um, one bit I just also read was in Chronicles 20 um, about Jehoshaphat, who was the king of Judah. So when he was in a chaotic situation, one thing for me that also stood out is, it said, Jehoshaphat stands up and shares a prayer to the people of Judah. And in verse 12, he prays to God saying, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So courageous peace is a revelation that I can step forward, knowing that I can fix my eyes on Jesus. So peace is knowing that God is working even when we don't understand. It enables us to act confidently in the character of God. And another passage I love is Luke 8, where the women chose to focus on Jesus despite the chaos and the crowd around her. And Jesus met her within the chaos. So... Um, Another thing that I, I just read about is in, in war-torn conflicts, an armed force would know that by using a smoke grenade, they can take advantage of the enemy because it removes their focus. So there's so many things demanding our attention daily. So we need to choose to focus on Jesus and fight for the peace that he has already given us. So courageous peace requires us to fight for our focus, and I really do feel that is a big fight that we we have in this day and age i mean especially with technology phones um, social media and then life <laughs> and the busyness of life so we continually have to fight for our focus to bring our focus back to jesus and then isaiah gives us a promise 
it says um, Isaiah 26. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. So Philippians in the message version says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worry, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. So courageous peace is also a peace that says, no matter what happens to me, I have the opportunity to deepen my trust in God. I can shape my worries into prayers and let his true peace reside in my heart and mind. So uh, this is what we can do. We can take every thought captive. We can make every need known. We can praise and declare the victory. Then we can accept God's promise and we can replace the fearful thought. So some scriptures that stood out for me as well is um, 1 Corinthians. It says, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Romans 14, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And Philippians 4 verse 9 says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So a few scriptures I just thought about when I was studying this whole peace thing, and I'm not, I, I prepared a 10 page document, which I obviously can't share in this short time. Uh, I just wanted to say, because there is so much to study on peace, actually. And also, it says, it's a piece that surpasses all understanding. So even if I was King Solomon and I was going to use all the understanding I possibly have, it was even surpass all of that still. So um, some scriptures I thought about is one that I really hold, and I was like, how is it really fitting into this? But it's like when Peter was in the garden and he pulled his sword and he cut the guy's ear off. But Jesus was on his way to the cross, and Jesus knew he had to follow through with this. And I think sometimes we, we don't want to go through the process. We, we just want the chaotic circumstances to be removed. We just want to get to that place of tranquility and peace, which we see as peace and describe as peace, which is a peaceful place, but the peace we talk about is, is the inner peace. And, um, and I just thought that that is exactly it. Sometimes we want to fight the circumstances. We want to fight the thing in front of us but we sometimes have to do tap into that peace even in the midst of chaos another example i thought was when paul was in prison and he was praising god he was in prison the awful place to be and um he was you know so and he still chose to do that and then obviously jesus himself when he was still continuing um Yes, and following through, uh, even when the road was horrible and the scriptures that said he sweat blood and all of that. So, yes, I mean, uh, that was not a, not a nice thing to go through, but he still, he still pushed through and actually, and he, and he obviously did it. And then um, the, some important bits that I saw was that obviously Jesus, before his birth was announced, it, it, was, it actually spoke about peace, that he was, he was going to bring peace. And then um, after, after his resurrection, one of the first things he did is he, he, um, he, gave, he gave a blessing of peace to his disciples because he said, peace be with you. Um, so circumstances begin to rob us of our peace the minute we choose to live as if God isn't with us. And we all know that. <laughs> so trials and tribulations will become all-consuming if we allow them to. You see, we're not to live with our physical eyes as our sole source of truth. God has granted us spiritual eyes and the ability to have faith in his faithfulness and goodness, regardless of our circumstances. He's given us the ability to choose to live in union with him as our foundation. Um, so that, and then, if we are ever to experience all that's available to us in this life, we must learn to pay attention to our feelings, thoughts, and desires of God within us. We must seek and find peace in our spirits that comes from the peace of the Holy Spirit. Scripture makes a powerful and direct connection be between obeying God's word and peace. Psalm 119 verse 165 says, Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. And this is one thing I really felt God was doing with me in the lockdown time as, as well. I was sharing it with one person. I said, it's, it's like he was fine-tuning peace for me because I just... I just suddenly became aware of what is the things that can take me out of this peace, what is the things that upsets me, makes me angry, and makes steal my peace basically. And 
and also then yes so it, once i identify those things i can i then can make a choice am i going to bow down to this thing as actually stealing my peace or am i only going to bow down to jesus and tap into his perfect peace that that i know is readily available for me um so oh and another scripture says obviously matthew 5 is 9 blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god so with this peace, we can obviously also produce peace and we can make peace wherever we go. Um, one a very not, um, beautiful thing is, is to realize is that the world has no defense for unmerited blessing. It has no defense for the people of God loving unconditionally. When we choose not to repay evil for evil, like the world will be, we bring heaven to earth around us. No man all women can live a truly peaceful life apart from the help of the Prince of Peace, which it says in Isaiah 9, verse 6. And as we know, the world tries everything to get peace through meditation, through some medication, through, um, you know, worldly things. But the only one that can truly bring peace is God. He is the God of peace. He is called the Prince of Peace. He is Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, which means peace. Um, so it's wonderful to be reminded that Jesus came to bring peace. Like I said, it, it was, it, it actually said glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. So I just want to leave these last few scriptures with you. Um, Corinthians 13 verse 11, it says, finally brothers rejoice, aim for restoration, Comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. In Philippians 4, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 16, verse 7, when the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Isaiah 53 verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. And James 3 verse 17, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And number six, um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And I really feel it's so beautiful that this verse actually became a very popular song during this lockdown time. And that's also why uh, why I just think that God really just wants to remind us about his peace that he, that he gives. And in Romans 16, verse 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Isaiah 54, verse 13, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. Isaiah 32, verse 18, my people will abide in peaceful habitation in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Exodus 14 verse 14 says, Jehovah will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So um, another interesting thing is even in Jesus' last commandment, when he was descending to heaven, he said, go and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, and I will be with you always. So uh, he also said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. And then 2 Peter 1 verse 2, it says, my God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So I'll just close in prayer for us. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord, that... What you're, uh, what you're saying through me, Lord, that, that we can take it to heart, Father, that we can really tap into this perfect peace that you are giving us, Lord. Nothing else in this world can, can provide this peace that everybody's looking for, Lord, but only you, Father. 
it is a peace that surpasses all understanding. It is a peace that when we are going through dramatic times, when we are in chaos, Lord, when we go through horrible things, Lord, we can remain in a perfect state, Lord, of well-being, Lord. And that, Lord, is mind-blowing. That is unfathomable, Lord. How can you even remain in peace when everything else is falling apart you? But that is the reason why we can stand for that. Only that, Lord. Not by ourselves, not in our own strength or energy, Lord, but only by you and your Holy Spirit and the peace that you give us, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you will make us more sensitive, Lord, every day, Lord, to really see what is taking us out of this peace, what is trying to steal our peace, Lord, what little things is the enemy trying to do, Lord, to take us out of this peace, to lose our focus of you, Lord. Because, Lord, that's the things that's making us stumble, Lord. That is the things that's taking us out of this peace. So we, we're not even in peace and we cannot produce peace, Lord. And I pray, Father, that we will be your people that will stay in your perfect peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.